Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Welcome to Orange Beach Presbyterian Church. My name is Kim. I'm the pastor here, and what a joy it is that we are gathered together for worship today. A couple of quick announcements before we begin. Uh, the first announcement is I'm telling you how to keep up with all of the announcements. If you're not on our email list and would like to be, uh, just go to our website. That's orangebeachpresbyterian.org. And... Uh, scroll down just a little bit right on that home page and you'll see a contact information form. You just put in your name and your email um, and that will go uh, to us. We will add you to our email list. We send out an email once a week, uh, usually Friday or Saturday, uh, to tell you what to expect in worship and to include any announcements um, and sort of a list of calendar events. We are about to launch into Advent and Christmas and all of the activities that go with that. I don't want you to miss anything. so. Um, we're including, you know, all of those dates for um, the Christmas concert that we're doing with a couple of other churches, um, the longest night service that we'll offer, our Christmas Eve service details, all of that stuff goes out in our emails, and, and we don't want you to miss it. So again, just go to our website, orangebeachpresbyterian.org, and sign up for that if you are not getting our emails, and we'll make sure you get on that list. Uh, the second announcement is um, in less than a week, we're going to be giving out our turkey dinners. It's this coming up Saturday, November 18th. Um, the giveaway is from 10 to 12. We have people who are signing up for the boxes, so we know exactly how many people are coming and how many boxes to prepare. Um, thank you to everyone who has already volunteered to be here. Uh, we're asking our volunteers to get here at 9 so that we can make sure we have all the boxes prepped and ready to go. Um, and then at 10 o'clock, we'll be inviting uh, those people to come and pick up their dinners. It's, it's going to be a frozen turkey. Um, and then, you know, all the sides, gravy and uh, mashed potatoes, stuffing, vegetables, pies, you know, all of that stuff will go into their box so that each family will have um, a good, complete Thanksgiving dinner uh, from our food pantry. So thank you to all the volunteers and thank you to everyone who has supported that either by bringing in food donations or making a financial donation. Because of your donations, we'll be able to go out shopping this week um, and purchase anything that we need. We'll be able to purchase the turkeys. Uh, we waited for them to go on sale uh, <laughs> so that we can um, you know, really stretch your dollar as far as we can take it uh, so that families in this community will have a good Thanksgiving meal. So again, thank you. Without all of y'all, we, we just couldn't do this. So we, you are appreciated. Those are our announcements. Now we're ready to begin worship. All the words that you're going to need to worship with us today will appear on your screen as you need them. And we begin as always with our call to worship. God has gathered us to this place where we hear those stories which show us what the kingdom of God is like. God summons us to this place where we can learn how to serve our God without reservation or hesitation. God will send us from this place to tell others of God's hopes and dreams. Let's worship God together.
let's now go into a time of confession. First, we'll pray silently, and then we'll pray together in the prayer found on your screen. Let us pray. And let us pray together. God of mercy, we want to stay awake and be ready for your surprises, but we are tired and overcome with the usual routine. We want to wait patiently for the fulfillment of your kingdom, but we are frustrated by our need for immediate gratification. We want to believe your promises from ancient days but we are overwhelmed with postmodern doubts. Come to us again, O oh God. Awaken us with your unexpected grace. Shock us with your daring mercy. Lift us up from lethargy and set our feet on your path once more. Amen. Hear what the Lord proclaims. I shall give you a new heart, a new spirit I will put within you. I will cause you to walk according to my ways, so you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Before we hear God's written word, let's turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, we are so thankful that we have this time together to worship you, that the technology exists so that we can gather in with our friends and family near and far and sing your praises, pray to you, hear your words, hear a message, and worship together. Lord, we are so thankful that this technology exists, and we are so thankful that you join us each and every time we gather for worship. No matter where we are or how we're worshiping, you are there. So fill us with your Holy Spirit. Open our ears, our hearts, our minds, so that we'll hear your written word and in it recognize your voice. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, as together we pray how he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter the first 13 verses. This is, of course, Jesus who is speaking. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. 
The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. times that uh, we read a passage and I say, oh, I love this passage, or this is my favorite part, and I have so many favorite parts of scripture that people just laugh when I say that now. This is not one of those passages. This is a difficult passage. It's difficult to hear. It's difficult to read. It doesn't exactly match up with the Jesus that we have come to know as we've read through the book of Matthew, as we read through any of the Gospels, really. This is not the Jesus who says, knock and the door will be opened to you. Apparently, this is a Jesus who says, knock and I may or may not answer the door. But if I don't answer the door, that's your fault. It's hard to wrap our minds around how different that is. But nevertheless, here it is. It is in scripture. It is a parable that Jesus is telling, the story about 10 bridesmaids called together to light the way for the wedding feast. 10 bridesmaids. Five were foolish and five were wise. So half and half. 
What made them foolish and what made them wise? Why is this like the kingdom of heaven? Because that's how this parable begins. With Jesus saying, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. It will be like these ten people, half of which are smart and the other half, not so much. Now, obviously, the bridegroom is Jesus. The bride's maids are all of us, all of us people who are waiting for Jesus to come. And this would have been significant in the days after Jesus died. This would have been significant because they thought Jesus was coming back in their lifetimes. I mean, they assumed he was. We don't make that assumption because it's been a couple thousand years and he hasn't come back yet. And this very passage says, you don't know the day or the hour. Sometimes I wonder what it would be like if we did know the day and the hour. If we knew that Jesus was coming back uh, on February 4th, 2075. If we knew, okay, not, not in my lifetime, would we live our lives any differently? Are we living our lives in anticipation of Jesus coming back? Do we live our lives in fear of him suddenly coming back? Are we concerned that we might not be ready? I don't know about you, but I honestly don't give it a whole lot of day-to-day thought. I mean, I, I just don't. As I'm driving down the road, I don't think to myself, is Jesus coming today? I'd better be ready because he could come today. It's hard for us as humans to live in anticipation of such an abstract thing. Like, we know it's a promise. We know he's coming. But since we don't know when and since it's been so long, it's easy to sort of lose that sense of urgency that comes with it, the urgency that perhaps the disciples of the time felt, knowing that he was coming back. And I have to wonder how long it took before they started to get a little bit complacent themselves. But certainly, after 2,000 years, people have become complacent. And I'm not suggesting that we should live in minute-by-minute anticipation. I don't know if I could stand that kind of excitement. And I don't think we should be living in minute-to-minute fear But I do think it's good every once in a while to reflect on that and say, hey, you know what? Jesus is coming back any minute, and I don't know when that might be. And I do need to be ready. We spend a lot of time during the season of Advent talking about that, how Jesus came and will come again, and how we need to be ready. Advent is about uh, waiting for Jesus to come at Christmas, and it's about waiting for Jesus to come again. So what are we doing while we are waiting? Well, let's take a look at this story. Let's see what the bridesmaids are doing. Uh, Those who were called foolish left any extra oil at home. They assumed that what they had in their lamps was enough. Those who were called wise must have planned ahead or at least thought about what might happen because they brought extra oil with them. They brought it in a little jar. And so they're waiting and their lamps are burning. But meanwhile, they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting. waiting. It starts to get A little bit too long, perhaps. He's taking a whole lot longer to arrive than any of the ten bridesmaids had anticipated, so everyone fell asleep. You know, again, we, we can identify with that. When we're not occasionally taking some time to think, hey, Jesus is coming back. What is that going to look like? Am I going to be uh, ready? If we don't take a little bit of time to think about that, maybe we fall asleep, metaphorically speaking. Maybe we're so focused on just getting through each day that we don't think about what might happen. 
So are we thinking about it? And what do we need to do to be ready? And apparently, we're going to have to rely on our own selves. If you look at this parable, which again is, is not similar to much of the way we see Jesus acting with his grace and his mercy, with his inclusivity and his love. Because at midnight, the cry rings out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. So then they all wake up. So the five foolish ones say, "Uh uh-oh, our lamps are going out. We can't light the way. Give us some of your oil. And the five wise ones say, we, we don't have oil to spare. There may not be enough for everybody. And then all of our lamps are going out. So you need to go buy some more oil. Fill your lamps yourselves, essentially. Now, I get, I get where the other bridesmaids are coming from. Sometimes we need to be wise with what we have so that there's enough for everyone. Because they're right. If you have enough oil to keep five lamps going, what happens when you split that between five more? Now you've got 10 lamps. Now nobody has enough oil and you're all sitting in darkness. That's no good. You know, I think we tend to to look at these bridesmaids who won't share and think, what is wrong with them? Why would they not help their friends? Why would they not make sure that they had enough oil? I mean, maybe they just didn't have enough. You know, we go through this in the food pantry where we want everyone to have the food that they need. And so we go back and forth. Do we, do we just let everybody take as much food as they choose to take? Because unfortunately what ends up happening sometimes is, you know, one or two people will come first thing in the morning as soon as the food pantry opens and then they take so much food that there's just not food left to feed other families. So we struggle with that. Like obviously they need the food and we want to give it to them, but if we have five more families who are coming, we wanna make sure that they have some food to take too. How do we make sure we live in this good balance of making sure that everybody gets some food from the pantry? And if, you know, if we had a, a million dollar endowment to the food pantry where we could have you know, shelves and shelves and rooms and rooms of food, perhaps it would be different, but we're trying to be wise with all of our resources wise with the food, wise with the money that we are using to buy the food, all of that. It's, it's not an easy decision to make, and I really give lift my hat to uh, Jennifer, our food pantry coordinator, because she does an amazing job of being kind and generous and also making sure that we are being wise with our resources. So I get where, the, where these bridesmaids are coming from. There's no point in 10 of us sitting in the dark. So y'all go out, get your oil, and then come back. Of course, the problem is they didn't wait for them to come back. They didn't hold the door for them. Because while these five were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrives. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. This is where they shut the door. So, you know, I understand why nobody shares, but I'm a little bit disturbed because nobody is sharing. It's just strange for a Jesus story. Remember, this is Jesus who said, don't send the people away to eat. We'll feed them here. And he multiplied the loaves and the fishes. This is Jesus who, when his mom said, hey, we have no wine left, he changed water into wine. Surely the bridegroom coming could have said, there is oil for everyone. Your lamps will burn. Regardless, here I am, Jesus, who is the light of the world. Are we not putting our faith in Jesus to light our path? Are we putting too much trust in the oil in our lamps? With metaphors, they can take some different turns. 
We're not really 100% sure of what Jesus meant at this time because we weren't there listening to him. But that's one of the wonderful, amazing, glorious things about scripture is I can open up my Bible and I can read this parable. And one day I think, oh, you know, God is really telling me this. And then a couple years down the road, I read the same passage from the same Bible. And I say, oh, God has really said this that to me on this day. That is how we have this wonderful conversation with scripture. It can mean different things to different people at different times. So you have to be open as you're reading scripture to what it is saying to you. So what is this scripture saying today? Well, what, what happens when you're waiting for Jesus to come and you do become a little complacent and we do start to fall asleep? And then we say, ah, I don't have enough oil. I, don't, I can't light the way because I'm just burned out. Perhaps this is telling us to just make sure we are replenishing and restoring what we need to shine that light. Now, I talked about the food pantry. The food pantry is a light in a dark time for many families. And we see all different makeups. We see uh, young parents with children. We see single people. We see older couples and older singles. We see people who have never been to a food pantry their whole lives, but their rent has recently increased and they're on a fixed income and they need a little bit of help just to have food in the house. We see grandparents who are helping take care of their grandchildren. We see people, most of these people do have employment of some kind, but they're just still struggling. How can we, as a church, pour out to them if we're not replenishing? If we don't ever replenish the food on the shelves, one day there will be nothing left. One, one little can of green beans that somebody will finally take and then will be empty and we'll say, why do we have no food to give out? We haven't replenished it. Some days we feel like we have poured out and poured out and poured out of ourselves and we come to the realization <laughs> that we've got nothing left. I'm, I'm done. And I need to recharge. This is why we have days off. This is why we have time off. This is why we have alone time, prayer time, whatever your time looks like that you need to refill. We've got to take it or we're all going to be sitting in the dark. And that's no good. We can also model what it looks like to be one of the wise bridesmaids who does take care and does have some extra and knows when to refill so that people aren't having to run out and try to figure out how to get oil for their own lamps. Imagine if this parable were a little bit different. Imagine if the wise bridesmaids brought jugs of oil, gallons of oil, and said, sure, we've got plenty, come and share. Or imagine if all 10 brought enough. What if as they were all starting to gather, the five wise ones shared their wisdom and said, you know, we don't know how long we're going to be here. Have you brought any extra oil so our lamps don't go out? What if they had all gotten together as a group and said, okay, we don't have a ton of oil to replenish, so let's make sure we're kind of burning a little bit low so that we don't run out of oil and we're all in this together. There's all these different ways you could rework this parable, but again, that's not how it went. But this is reminding us that we do need to be ready. And not only ready for when Jesus comes back, because again, we don't know when that is, could be today, but we need to be ready for the day God has for us and the days ahead. Christmas is coming up. We need to be ready for that. We need to plan for that. We plan for the things that we know are coming. And if we know Jesus is coming, 
Let's plan for that. Let's bring the kingdom of God nearer and nearer. And let's make sure that the people around us, that we have enough oil to pour out to them while still making sure that we're replenishing our own. And what that looks like is going to be different for all of us. Whatever we need to do, whether it's get some extra sleep, take a nap in the afternoons, have some quiet time with just our Bible, a weekend retreat away from the house, uh, take our lunch break, spend some time in prayer, come to a Bible study, sing hymns one evening, whatever, whatever it looks like to you, make sure that you are claiming that time and replenishing your oil so that we can continue to be a light in the world. And the world is dark these days. There's a lot going on. It's, it's almost overwhelming as we hear about wars and death and destruction and illness and, I mean, all of the things that are in the news, all of these things that we are being just bombarded with. We've got to make sure we're taking some time to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others and so that we can be a good model to people who look to us so that we can demonstrate, hey, some time off is good. The, the few Sundays following my vacation, I had a church member comment that you can really tell the vacation did me some good because the sermons were really good. And it confirmed to me, sometimes I feel guilty when I take vacation. I don't know why, but it confirmed to me that it is necessary. We need to remind one another sometimes to recharge, to replenish, because we should be keeping watch. And Jesus says, keep watch because you don't know the day or the hour. But not only are we keeping watch for Jesus to come back, we need to keep watch for one another. We need to keep watch for what's happening in this world so that we can continue to be the hands and feet of God on earth. And that means preparing. That means being ready. We need to be keeping watch for Jesus to return. Not in fear, but in glorious anticipation of that wonderful day. And not just sitting back and waiting for him to show up, but actively working in the world to make this the kingdom of God. So that not only are we ready, but the world is a better place while we're waiting. This is an exciting thing. As much as I struggle with this parable and some of the nuances in it, it's got some really wise advice for us to keep watch, for us to be ready so that our lights can shine so brightly. Amen. Let's now pray for and with one another. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all of the joys that we have for all of those times when we are aware that you are coming and our lights are shining and we're feeling ready and prepared, we give you thanks. For all of those times when your presence is felt, as we are smiling, as we are laughing, as we are noticing you in our midst and within one another, we are thankful. Because you do join us. You are always here. You are always listening you are always celebrating and ready to smile along with us. And you are also with us when we weep, when we worry, when we're scared, when we're angry, when unexpected things happen, when sad things happen, when we grieve. There you are. You tell us over and over, do not fear. And you tell us that, not because bad things don't happen, but because you're always there when they do. You are our strength and our shield, even in the midst of crisis. So help us. Make your presence known when there is crisis, when there is sadness, when there is grief. And help us show others your light. 
as we fill up our own lamps. Be the light that shines. We know that we can't do it on our own. So we are thankful that you are here walking with us every step of the way. Comfort those who grieve. Heal those who are sick. Be with us each and every minute of each and every day until the day that you return. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. This concludes our worship service. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again next week. And until then, it's time to replenish our oil so that our light can shine. We need to shine that light far and wide. And we need to do it with excitement. We need to be bold. For as we part ways, we go with God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.